Hi again, and welcome to part six of this seven part video series. In this series, we are crocheting together this Argyle blanket using planned pooling techniques and Red Heart Super Saver pooling yarn with six colors. And we are currently on row five, which is really, really cool because this is a five row repeat, which means that when we're done with row five, you can go back to the video for row one if you need help, and you can follow that video and know where you are with your count and whatnot. Um, again, as I mentioned in the previous video, and in, I think, previous videos to that, uh, I, we have this little cheat sheet that shows the, 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 way, the, the number of, of stitches that each color has at the beginning and the end of each row. And I like to uh, look at this sheet at the beginning and end of my row. So, okay, row five. Row five says that we start with five, uh, excuse me, four stitches. And that makes sense because in row four, we had one stitch of the green. We have enough green here for another four stitches. So I'm going to turn my work, again, no chaining, and I'm going to insert my hook into the very, very first stitch and complete a single crochet right there in the green. And then I'm going to do another single crochet, that's two. Uh, looks like I have enough green on my yarn for a nice uh, couple of larger stitches. So let's do two larger stitches in here. and I have sort of a bluish green on my hook, so that works. So I have my four green stitches, and now I'm going to continue with the blue. One, two, three, four, five. Muddy on the hook, perfect. One, so isn't this fun? You are making a planned pooling blanket. You're on row five of the five row repeat. So you're starting to really get the hang of this. One, two, three, four, five. And pretty soon you're gonna be having a beautiful blanket of your own. It's kind of like magic as this pattern unfolds before your eyes. And I think that's just so much fun. I really enjoy looking at color and playing with color and seeing how the color looks compared to other colors and how the colors changes. Uh, the colors change when they're juxtaposed with other colors. So I just find this project to be very satisfying and totally not boring. I don't know about you, but when I have to crochet a, uh, an item that is all a solid color, and especially if it's a large item, like a blanket, then it's very, um, how you say, it is very boring. <laughs> and uh, I know that I, I recently crocheted a blue top for myself, and I love it, one, two, three, four, five, but it's just, it was all blue. And uh, halfway through the project, I was starting to get so bored, I had to break it up and work on some other projects at the same time just because it just gets boring and I feel like I'll never finish it if I just have to stick with that one project. But with this plan pulling blanket, I just have so many colors, one, two, three, four, five, that my, my uh, I'm just never bored. I, I, I get excited over colors. Do you guys get excited over color? I, I really get excited over color. Um, yeah, so I'm really hoping that I run out of yarn in this row because this is my last row and I want to show you how to change colors and I'm hoping that I don't have to actually cut my yarn uh, prematurely to do that but I will if I have to because I am definitely going to show you because you know you're going to come you're going to you're going to have to uh start a new skein because you're just not going to have enough in one skein to make a blanket one two three four five and it's not difficult, but there are a few little tips I can give you. One, two, three, four, and five. Golly, let's see, how much yarn do I have? Oh, I'm really so close to the end. 
if, okay, I'm, I've decided I'm just going to keep crocheting, and if this yarn runs out in row six, then I'll just show it to you then, because I really don't want to waste yarn. I don't think it's fun to waste yarn at all. <laughs> so, um, because when you do cut yarn, you end up wasting some. Okay, it's one, two, three, four. I've got four pink here, and I only have a little bit of pink here. Like, do I have enough to make another whole stitch here? Hmm. I don't know. Maybe a tight one. Let's try it. Yeah, that worked. Um, good. One, two, three, four, and five. But you see how I can talk and do this now? I, there's no way I could have done this when I first began this project. When I first began this project, I had never used Red Heart before. Not their Super Saver, anyway. One, two, three, four, five. And I had never done plan pooling before. And uh, I did read some tutorials and I watched some videos and mainly saw information about the moss stitch and I was wanting to do a single crochet. And uh, I couldn't really find a video that showed this exact papaya blanket, but thanks to Nastasia's videos, one, two, three, four, five, is that? Let's see, uh, one, two, three, four, Anyway, Nastasia, I don't know if you know her videos, but you can check her on YouTube. She's a really popular crochet channel. Um, she shared that um, that website, the planpooling.com website, where there's an application in there where you can input your, your data and uh, develop your own pattern for single crochet. And uh, that's what I did. That's how I got this argyle. And in the last video of the series, I'm gonna show you how that works. Uh, in the meantime, you can check out Anastasia, of course. She, she gives a really good um, tutorial on how that works as well. One blue, two blue, three blue, four blue, five blue. One, two, three, four, five. I like to always just check back as I'm working, if I'm talking and working. Um, I just, just keep myself on track. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, I'm almost done. Okay, I think I've only got maybe like two more color sections with my yarn. Yay, it is ending. One, two, three, four, five. One pink, two pink, three pink, four pink, five pink. Let me see, this is how much yarn I have left over here. I think I've, I can do the blue and the green, I think. Let's see, do this blue. One, two, three, four, five, and then the green. One, two, three, four, and five. Ooh. I, find, I, I don't know if you've noticed this, but even before um, the last green section, I had, I think, the same issue where I still had green. So I find that like the green section is a little bit longer with this ball of yarn. Like I said in previous videos, it's not perfectly spaced, but it's pretty close. It's close enough to have ease of work, but you still have to do some work. Okay, so uh, I've got my green, and what I can do is I'll do my first two blue. One, two, and I'm going to grab my my new ball is that gigantic or what <laughs> uh, and by the way if you're working from the outside of your skein or your you know the outside of the skein of the red heart then when you roll your ball then you want to start from the inside so that you still are starting with the same yarn that would be on the outside uh, from before if that makes sense okay so basically what i want to do is i want to make sure 
that my my next uh, the, the, the yarn I'm adding that I'm finding the exact exact same point where I was before and here we've got green blue and salmon so here I found a place where there's green that goes into blue and that goes into salmon so uh, this is where I want to be let's see yeah okay green blue and salmon so I, 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 I'm going to so basically what I want to do I already I just did the green and here's the green so this is going to be my tail and I've already done two stitches of the blue so I'm going to add my yarn and how you do that is I'm going to take this the tail that I was of my previous working yarn and I'm going to just kind of put that off to the side in the back and I'm going to grab my new yarn I'm going to the blue section I'm just sort of going to fold it in half and make a little loop in my fingers and put that loop on the hook uh, some people will do a slip knot here but I'm not going to because I'm going to show you why I'm just going to put the hook on there and then pull that that yarn through and pull the that tighter and here I have my my working yarn with my blue and I want to continue the blue I want I've already done two blue stitches so I want to do three more blue stitches so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the tail of the new working yarn I'm going to keep pulling it until I feel by just looking at it that I have about three stitches worth of blue Okay, and now once I've got that, this, this, this uh, loop on my hook has gotten really, really tight, so I'm going to pull that yarn to tighten that. Oops. <laughs> there we go. All right, once you've got everything situated, then I'm going to do my first stitch right in here. It's going to be a little bit messy here. It's okay. I'm going to do one blue. Two blue. And three blue. And I'm like, okay, I still have some blue here. I, and these stitches are pretty big. So what I need to do is go back and pull my working yarn a little bit pull the tail of the work of the new working yarn a little bit so that it makes the working yarn a little bit shorter and then I'm going to continue again with my one blue two blue and three blue still wow okay go back again put my hook in that loop to keep it a loop and I'm going to pull that the tail Again, just a little bit. Pull that a little bit tighter so I have less working yarn, just a smidge, and continue with another three. One, two, and three. Gosh, I do it again. I, I'm so, I do this so carefully. Let's try this again. Pull that loop through. Here's my working yarn. All right. This should do it. One, two, three. Okay, and then go back and just sort of pull your tails so that they're the stitches are where they should be. I should have two tails. I should have a tail. Uh, for my old working yarn and then the tail for my new working yarn and I like to leave just really really long tails here so that I can weave them in nicely and securely since I'm not doing a slip knot or anything or any sort of knots I just really want a long tail so I can weave in later and then you just continue with what you would normally do with five single crochets with each color across your your row it's really as easy as that it's one, two, three, four, no. Okay, so now I'm in a, I've got a new ball here, a new color, a new colorway. It's uh, should be the same, but I'm noticing that right now my salmon section was a little bit smaller than the other time. So I'm going to single crochet a little bit more tightly. That's three, 
four and five. Great. One yellow, two yellow, three yellow, four yellow. Mm. Do that four tighter. Four yellow and five yellow. And I'm just noticing that my color sections, and this is where you'd want to count a little bit more. You'd have to pause the Netflix movie, or you know, at least at least pay attention. I've done my first three, and not a lot of pink left. I'm gonna have to do those last two tighter. So I'm already I'm noticing that this new ball of yarn, the sections, at least the two sections that I've just started with, are a little bit smaller than before. So I'm I'm having to uh, just adjust my tension a little bit. One, two, three blue, four blue, and five blue. And that brings me to the end of the row. Now here's the moment of truth. Look at my cheat sheet. Where's my cheat sheet? Oh, cheat sheet, where are you? Uh, I have lost my cheat sheet. Where'd it go? Ah. I guess it got busted for cheating and is now in cheater's jail. But I'm pretty sure that row five ends in five stitches. Um, it begins with four, ends in five. Just from my memory, it does. I've showed you that cheat sheet many, many times. Um, and what I'll do is I will um, put another cheat sheet in the description of this video. So below this video, there's an area where there's a description. You can check there and see that cheat sheet. and. Uh, and eventually you'll memorize it. It's really easy. Um, this is, was uh, the end of row five. And then you would just continue with row one, which I, uh, which will start with five, I think. No, no, no um, let's see. One, two, three, four, five. I'm gonna pause and find that cheat sheet just to make sure. Okay, yes, I just wanted to make 100% sure that I was correct here. So row five ends in five, and row one begins in five, which makes total sense. Uh, because we always have five stitches in each row, and each section of yarn only gives us five uh, stitches worth of that color. So yeah, you have finished the five rows of the five row repeat. What you want to do now is you can either consult your cheat sheet and just continue going um, as you have been. I think that many of you are able to do that at this point, but if you're still feeling a little bit shaky or you just want the company, then go back to video... Um, to the, uh, it's actually the second video in the series is where we tackle row one. And then you can just keep going back to row, uh, to those videos with each row. So when you are at row seven, you'll go to row two. Row eight, you'll go back to row three. Row nine, you'll look at four. Row 10, you'll look at five. 11, you'll go back to one again. I hope that makes sense. Um, it should be pretty um, straightforward. Um, if you have any trouble with that, with those sort of numbers, then another little trick I can tell you about is you can make a cheat sheet where you have 10 rows written down. They'll repeat, one through five are gonna be the same as uh, six through 10. However, you'll have that handy. And then if you're on row seven, you'll be able to see it on your list. And then if you're on row 17, then you'll say, okay, well, 17 is the same as seven, right? Or if you're, row, uh, if you're on row 23, then you just have to look at row three because counting in tens is just so easy. Row 33, you'd look at row three. Row 48, you would look at row eight, et cetera, et cetera. So if that sort of um, cheat sheet would help you, then I would recommend you writing that out and just keeping that handy. Otherwise, just think in rows one through five, and there you have it. You just keep going until you have finished your blanket. And I think it's really just so lovely. Let's see. Yeah, I'm, I'm just really loving this, and it's so warm. It's, uh, of course, we're in the middle of summer here, so I don't really love it. But the other night I was air con uh, I was uh, crocheting and it was air conditioned and it was sort of cold and nobody else was cold. So I sort of wrapped my blanket around me as I was working on it and it was really lovely. <laughs> but this is going to be perfect in the autumn and the winter and I'm really looking forward to using it then. And uh, yeah, I, I think it's going to be great. Now, if you wanted to make a baby blanket, then you would just stop a few rows back and you would have a nice size baby blanket. I'm going to continue going. I'm going to do another couple of skeins and have a nice blanket that 
will um, go all the way down to the end of my toes so that I can be nice and toasty warm on the sofa. Uh, and then um, for the final video of the series, I'm gonna show you how to finish the blanket by putting an edge around the edges. And I'm just gonna do a single crochet row, maybe a few single crochet rows. I'm still trying to figure out what color I'm gonna do. So we'll see how creative we can get with that. <laughs> and, um, but if you don't want to have an edge, you don't have to. You can just, your blanket will be done at this point. You essentially don't have to watch the next video. You can just enjoy your blanket and uh, use it in good health and it's all good. But if you'd like to learn how to put a single crochet edge around the blanket, um, or if you would like to see the planned pooling tool in use, uh, and other tips and tricks that I can think of between now and then, then please check out the next video. I think it'll come out in a week or so because I really need to finish this blanket before I do that. <laughs> and so I'm going to go and crochet as fast as I can. I still have another two skeins to crochet. So, you know, maybe it'll be two weeks. I don't know. I will do my best. Um, but you know what? Hey, if you get your blanket done before I do, then let me know. Send me a picture and I will give you a shout out because you will be a god or goddess of crochet. I will be so impressed if you can finish it before I do, but I encourage you to. Hey, if you've got more time to do that, then that's awesome. Um, anyway, it was such a pleasure sharing this experience with you. I Obviously, I'm very excited about it. Everyone I show it to is excited about it. So, and then the, the comments I've gotten have been excited about it. So it's, it's exciting. It's fun. It's color. It's, um, it's a, it's a beautiful design. So again, thank you for sharing this with me. I wish you a beautiful day and very happy crochet. And I will see you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.